Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tamar Mizels, and today we're gonna talk about Rosh Hashanah. Five things you should know about Rosh Hashanah. The first one is, why is it called Rosh Hashanah? Or what is Rosh Hashanah? So Rosh Hashanah in Hebrew literally means Rosh, the head, Hashanah of the year. And this day has a lot of significance for the rest of the year and it has a lot of implications. The way we behave on this day has a lot of implications for the rest of the year following. And also our spirituality level has a lot of significance how our following year will look like. Originally in the Bible, this day is not called Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, but it's actually called Yom Tru'ah, a day of Tru'ah, a day of blowing the shofar, which is our main mitzvah of the day. In the Bible, the first month of the year is not Tishrei, where we celebrate Rosh Hashanah, it's actually Nisan, the month where we as a nation became a nation, we left Egypt, and then following uh, later we got the Torah. This is the first month, and Tishrei is the seventh month, and was created in, so this is the first month in terms of the world, whereas Nisan is the first month in terms of us as a nation. Also in the Bible, it's mentioned as Yom Zikaron, the day of remembrance, which just means this is, you know, judgment day, God remembers us, he looks at us, looks at our deeds in the past year, and gives us new life for the new year. Also, we remember him, remember that there is a God and that he's the king and we crown him on this day. And that makes us also think about, you know, God's plan and God as a king. How are we doing in relation to this plan? Are we contributing to the world? How are we doing in the world? Now on Rosh Hashanah, we don't really get into the nitty gritty of our deeds and how well we did, but it's more of a general picture. God has a plan in the world. Are we sort of doing our share in this plan? Are we doing what we can for his plan? He works through us in this world and how are we doing in relation to that? The next one is that we celebrate Rosh Hashanah for two days. This is the only Jewish holiday where in Israel we celebrate two days of holiday. Why do we do this? Why do we celebrate two days? Basically, the Hebrew month is based on the moon and each Hebrew month either has 29 days or 30 days. The way they used to determine, you know, if the month was gonna be 29 or 30 days and then the following day would be Aleph, the first of the next month, was they used to have witnesses that would witness the, the new moon and meaning that it's already Aleph, it's already the next month. They would go to the Sanhedrin, the judicial system at the time, they would give their witness that they saw the moon and then that day would be determined as Aleph and the previous day would be determined either 29 or 30 days. It wanted to spread the news to the rest of Israel that Aleph, the first month, was determined. So they had messengers go to Israel and tell them that the new month has started. In past days, you know, before airplanes, it took a long time for the messengers to get abroad. That's why they didn't know what the date was and that's why they celebrate all the holidays two days. Shavuot, Sukkot, and Pesach, they celebrate two days. But for Rosh Hashanah in Israel, we also celebrate two days. Because Rosh Hashanah is celebrated on Aleph of the month, the first day of the month, we don't have time to wait for the witness. It could be that the holiday already started and we have yet to determine Aleph of the month. So that's why it was determined that Rosh Hashanah would be celebrated on two days. Today, this isn't the case. We don't have this judicial system at play with witnesses. We have a calendar system where we know all the dates in advance, but we still have this tradition where we celebrate two days abroad and on Rosh Hashanah, two days in Israel also. The most important mitzvah and the most important thing that we do on Rosh Hashanah is blow the shofar. The shofar is like this trumpet that we blow and like we mentioned in the Bible, Rosh Hashanah is mentioned as Yom Tru'ah, the day of shofar blowing. Why do we blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah? First of all, the Torah tells us to, which is the main reason, and the Torah doesn't give an explanation. But there are many, many explanations that are given for the shofar. One is that the shofar represents crowning of the king. Like we mentioned, Rosh Hashanah, this is the day that we are crowning God in the world. And also, it kind of represents like a wake-up call, right? Like an alarm clock for our soul. We have our daily lives and our daily routines and we're kind of, most of the year we're just, you know, sleeping and not really thinking like, who am I? What am I doing here? What am I doing in this world? When I hear the chauffeur blowing, it really has 
this effect on me. I can't explain. It really feels like some alarm clock for your soul. It's very quiet and you just hear this blowing and it really makes you feel connected to some higher power. It does something to your soul. I can't really explain, but it has a, 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 an impact on you. So there's three different blows. We have Tekiya, which is the long blow. Tekiya, tu. Shvarim is more broken up one. Tu, tu, tu. And then true is more like a cry, like tu, 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 tu. Rosh Hashanah, we do these blows several times. The next one is what are the simanim that we do on Rosh Hashanah? So simanim means symbols. Basically, before our meal, we take a few symbolic foods that are symbols and we make blessings on them for the new year. We use these symbols to make requests for the new year and there's a lot of different customs depending on you know what your family customs are the real famous ones are to eat fish that we should multiply like fish and also a head of a fish or a head of an ox some customs do and this one is that we should be to a head and not to a tail pomegranates we eat the pomegranate seeds and this is that we should have many good deeds as the seeds of the pomegranates. And of course, a really famous one is apple in honey. We should have a sweet new year. Every Rosh Hashanah I have a discussion about this with my sister. Are we supposed to be making requests for ourselves? The mindset on Rosh Hashanah, of course Hashem, God wants us to have good things and to have a good life and to give us all the good, but our mindset should be a little bit like, I want these good things and I want to have a good life because I want to do more good in the world. I want to contribute more to God's plan. And that's really the story of Chana, who we read about her on Rosh Hashanah, where she wanted to have her son, who ended up being Shmuel Hanavi, a very important leader. And basically her prayer, instead of just saying, I want to have a kid, I can't, I'm not able to bear children and I want to have a kid, she made it about Hashem. I want a kid, not for myself, but I want a kid who could bring good into the world and to be part of Hashem's plan. So I think it's both. On one hand, we want to ask for things, we want to have all the blessings and all the good things, but our mindset should really be, I want all these things because I want to be a contributor and to do good in your world. I want to wish you and your families a Shana Tova Umetuka, a great sweet new year with all the good things that you wish for. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Shana Tova!